Hey guys, it's Tomatoda, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this Bender keycap. You can say that this is kind of like an update on my polymer clay keycap tutorial from a year ago. I am still using female professional polymer clay, mostly because that's just what I have, but you can definitely use female soft or Sculpey Primo as well. For the keycap base, I'm using this DSA profile keycap that I bought on Amazon a year ago. And it's made out of PBT material, which is a must because PBT material can withstand the heat that comes from your oven when you bake polymer clay with it. There is still a limit though. The melting point for these PBT keycaps are 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, FEMA Professional is supposed to be baked at 230 degrees Fahrenheit, but it still works out. Here, I'm adding some liquid clay to the surface of the keycap for extra adhesion, and I'm rubbing it into a thin layer using my fingers. So instead of adding a thin layer of clay on top like I used to, nope. I now prefer to add a thick, thick, booty thick layer of clay. I like how it flattens out the top and gives me more surface area to work with. And it's just a different aesthetic than what I used to do, I guess. Here, I'm removing the corner excess with my knife so that I can fold down the sides without overlapping. Make sure everything is flushed and that there is no air bubbles trapped underneath. Very, very important, no air bubbles. Before, what I used to do is I bake the keycap with all the excess on the sides and then sand everything down. I really, really hated the sanding process, but it's necessary to get the sides as thin and as even as possible. And this is the method that worked for me at the time. However, thanks to my fellow crafter Almipon, I learned a better technique. First, what you do is you cut off the clay halfway on the sides. And here, it kind of reminded me of the Psycho helmet drawing from Mob Psycho. I don't know if you guys see the resemblance. But um, anyways, then you pull down the rest of the clay towards the bottom. That way, it thins out naturally while keeping the plumpness at the top. Using my X-Acto knife, I'm removing the bottom excess and this is where I check if the clay is thin enough. If it isn't, I keep going at it until it's the shape and thinness that I want it to be. And after baking, if it does end up being a little bit thicker than I would like it to be, I can always sand it down just a little bit. Only a minimal amount of sanding is required. You know, nothing crazy like I did in the past. Once it's in the shape that I want, I'm going to bake it in my oven at hopefully 230 degrees Fahrenheit for only 10 minutes. This is how I think I'm preventing the keycap from melting. I basically just bake it in 10 to 15 minute intervals instead of like a super long period of time, especially since, you know, it's a small amount of clay. I don't think it would be really necessary to do long, long baking times. That is my theory. So anyways, after baking, I'm going to carefully remove some of the dust with acetone. Now onto Bender's face. Starting with the eyes, I'm going to layer a very thin dark gray clay on top of a thicker silver clay and cut out a long strip. However, this ended up being a little bit too thick for what I needed. So here I am trying to thin it out with my acrylic roller. Using glow in the dark polymer clay, I'm going to make two round balls for the eyes and wrap each one with a strip of dark gray clay. Next, I'm going to cut off some of the excess in the back and also a super thin layer of the gray on the top and the bottom of the pair of eyes. Then taking the gray and silver strip from earlier, I'm going to wrap it around the eyes and blend in the seams. I know this video makes this portion of the craft seem kind of easy, but actually this was like the most time consuming and difficult part of the project. Using just a bit of liquid clay, I'm going to glue the eyes to the face. And then I'm going to carefully blend in the seams using my needle tool. 
And once everything looks good, I'm going to bake it in my oven for another 10 minutes. So when I work on other parts of the face, I don't actually mess up the eyes because I would be pulling my hair out if I did. After cleaning it up, I'm going to shove the empty spaces in between with more dark gray clay. And the reason why I'm using dark gray instead of black is because I think the black is a little bit too harsh. Lastly, I add two small black squares for Bender's pupils. Moving onto the mouth, I'm using the same glow in the dark clay and as you can see, I'm cutting it up into layers, adding a very thin sheet of dark gray clay in between. I'm pretty much making a cane here and uh, this is because I view Vendor's mouth as like a digital screen. So I wanted the mouth to be a flat 2D surface. But that is just me. Other options could be to make an indentation if you don't mind it, or to paint the outlines. Painting for me is like my very, very last resort just because I have really bad 2D motor skills. For me, making it into a cane is less stressful. <laughs> Anyways, I reduced the mouth cane until it looked like it fit and then I rounded out the edges and last minute I decided to add a thin black layer around the mouth. It would have helped if I did it before reducing but spontaneous decisions are just a part of crafting, right? After slicing the cane as thin as possible, I added it onto the keycap and then baked it in my oven for another 10 minutes. It's time for the last clay detail, Bender's antenna. However, due to the limited space, I was thinking about making the antenna short, but I knew it would be a decision that Bender would not approve of. Are you crazy? That's little Bender you're talking about. You're not a robot or a man, so you wouldn't understand. So I made it the proportionate size, which means that this keycap will have to be used exclusively for the top keys on a keyboard. Here is the keycap after I baked it for 10 minutes. And now I'm trying to reinforce the backside of the antenna with more liquid clay because who really sees the back, right? Then it goes into the oven one last time for 15 minutes. It is now time to coat Bender with UV resin. Taking a toothpick, I'm going to cut both ends and stick one side into the stem of the Bender keycap and with the other side, I'm gonna stick it into the stem of a failed keycap project. Using Mr. Resin UV resin and a flat paintbrush, I'm going to coat three thin layers, curing each layer in the UV lamp for five minutes each time. Also, I'm going to use a lighter to pop the micro bubbles before I cure it. As you can see, the failed keycap at the bottom is used as a stand. That's its only purpose in life now. I also want to add that um, I didn't want the antenna to break, so I kind of glopped on the resin in that area, which is not ideal because a lot of the details is kind of like blended in, but it is what it is. And here it is, the Bender keycap finished. Nice and shiny and angry looking. I'm kind of curious, but who is your favorite Futurama character? Because I feel like there's a lot of likable characters in the show and I assume like it'll be a range of different answers. That's my thought. <laughs> um, but personally, my favorite is Zoidberg because I tend to like pathetic characters and I think that's also why I really like hamsters too. They're kind of pathetic. But uh, yeah, let me know. And um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.